Is it true that NBA players nowadays are much better than the previous NBA legends? Or is it just that the NBA defense now is broken? What if Doncic, Booker, Mitchell, Lillard, and Embiid played in the NBA back then, where there was no three-point line and the defense wasn't as soft as it is right now? Could they still score 70 points in a single game? Well, we compare all the performances of the top 15 highest scores in a single game to see if today's 70 points per game is worth celebrating like before. Because if 73 points are Luka Doncic's highest points in a single game, that's just the average points per game of Wilt Chamberlain in all his six 70 plus point games. And mind you, the NBA back then was on a completely different level. Don't get me wrong, I am glad that Luka Doncic did such a historic performance. In fact, it's extreme to think that he is creating an impact in his rookie year. His 73 points is the highest scoring game since Kobe Bryant's unforgettable 81 in 2006. Luka's 73 points from 25 of 33 shooting, including 8 threes and a near perfect free throw record, his phenomenal performance ties for the fourth highest in NBA history. On top of that, Luka's true shooting percentage hit an astonishing 91.2%. And not to mention, in the 2023-2024 season, he is averaging a whopping 34.4 points a game, which is the highest this season, along with 9.4 assists next to Trey Young's 10.9 APG. And Luka also contributes 8.6 rebounds per game. He's also next to Curry in the 3-point field goals made, averaging 3.9 per game. And if we zoom out a bit, we will notice that three of these leaderboards have his face on them. This means that Doncic's performance this season is crazy. But if we take a step back to the 60s or 70s, it's like Wilt Chamberlain played games at his maximum level of hardness and made six games of him scoring 70 plus points. While Luka Doncic and other modern NBA players played it on an easy level and got 70 plus points. And to prove my point, here's an example. On December 8, 1961, against the Los Angeles Lakers, Chamberlain scored 78 points, snagged 43 rebounds, and even dished out an assist all in 63 minutes, shooting 50% from the field. Then there's a legendary game on March 2, 1962, against the New York Knicks, where Chamberlain scored 100 points, grabbed 25 rebounds, and had two assists shooting over 57% from the field. What really blows my mind is that Chamberlain set these records before the three-point line was introduced in the 1979-1980 NBA season. Just think about that. All those points came from inside the arc or free throws. That's crazy. On top of that, he also set records for the highest single season scoring averages, including 50.4 points per game in the 1961-62 season. Again, Chamberlain did it under completely different rules. Moreover, before Kobe Bryant scored his 81 points in the 2006 game against the Raptors, which became the second highest scoring game in NBA history, the defensive and offensive rules had drastically changed. One of the biggest changes that happened was the three-point line. You see, in the 1960s NBA, there wasn't a three-point line, and it wasn't introduced until that 1979-1980 NBA season. It's mind-boggling to think how Chamberlain managed to average 73 points per game in all of his 70-plus point games, making all of them by just shooting two points at a time. Also, David Thompson's 73 and Elgin Baylor's 71 are some events that we need to take a look at. Because, like Chamberlain, they achieve these scores without the benefit of the three-point line. Now let's play a game where the modern NBA players who manage to score 70 plus points per game happen to play without the three-point line. First, if we take a look at Kobe, 21 points of his 81 came from threes, which is 7 out of 13 attempts giving him a 53.85% accuracy from the three-point range against the Raptors in 2006. If the three-point line didn't exist, Kobe would have made 74 points in a single game, which could be third on the list, next to Wilt's 78 points back in 1961. Luka Doncic's 73 points, 24 of which came from his 8 out of 13 attempts from beyond the arc. Meaning, without that three-point line, he would have scored 65 points in that game, 
placing his performance among the numerous 65-point games of Wilt Chamberlain. And the same would happen to Donovan Mitchell's 71 points. He managed to shoot 7 of 15 shots, which is 46.67% from beyond that three-point line, meaning 21 points of his 71 came from threes. So, without that three-point line, he would have only managed to make 64 points moving his performance down to the top 29, next to Giannis's 64 last year. When it comes to Damian Lillard, who made a staggering 13 threes out of his 22 attempts, he earned the title of the oldest dude in the NBA to drop 70 plus points in a single game. If there were no three point line, his 70 points would be cut to 57, and it would make him disappear from the historic list. Moreover, the lowest, yet for me the best 70 points in the modern era, is what Joel Embiid did. He just threw two three-point attempts and made only one of them. So, aside from being top 15 on the list, he could move to just the top 20, alongside Chamberlain's many 67-point games. Now, okay, maybe it's so unfair if we're going to remove the three-point line and compare all their statistics. So, let's bring it back. The three-point line exists again. But could you ever think that Lillard, Luka, Embiid, and Mitchell could score that much if all the hand-checking were still legal in the game? See, hand-checking is where defenders were allowed more leeway in using their hands to check offensive players, which could slow down or impede the movement of the player with the ball. Before the implementation of this rule, the scores usually hung below 100 points per game, often even in the 90s. Because defenders were allowed to be more physical with the guards, they would actually put their hands on them, bump into them, and it wouldn't be called a foul. But today, teams are now scoring over 110 points on average. You barely touch the guards and it's a foul. You touch Draymond Green's jersey, then you have a fist in your face. Kidding aside, this shift has made a gigantic impact on how effective big men are on the court. While they can still see some hand checking in the paint, guards have a free pass. I love the NBA now as much as I loved the NBA back then, but I've gotta say, I miss the days of hand checking where the legends had to navigate through a maze of arms and physical challenges to score. And yeah, with hand checking and the absence of the three point line, Chamberlain, David Thompson, and Elgin Baylor managed to score 70 points in a single game. Do you think the modern players could do that? Well, for me, no. But I bet the closest player who could manage to score 70 plus points under those conditions is Kobe because of his extreme competitiveness. So, without the innovations and rule changes in offense and defense, without that three point line, Without the softness of today's NBA rules, Chamberlain is obviously the conqueror of the historic list. And it's a pain in the ass to know that people nowadays are fighting over who's the GOAT, MJ or LeBron, and overlooking the fact that Chamberlain is the greatest NBA player who walked the earth. With all that being said, for me, the reason we're witnessing more players making 70 plus points in a single game in this era is because of the implementation of the hand checking rule and that three point line. Don't get me wrong, I am not against it. I completely understand that change is inevitable. But if you click this video right here, you will know why the word change is not a thing for Dirk Nowinski and other players who stayed true to their teams and didn't leave until retirement. So what are you doing? Click it!